18 Secrets That Lie Hidden in Your Subconscious Mind. As I continue to do the work of going deep within my own subconscious mind, which is really a net result of the training that I put together, which was released earlier this year on programming your subconscious mind, I recognize that there's far more to what goes on in the subconscious mind and how we create reality based on what's on our subconscious mind. So much so that I've been making a lot of videos lately on this topic. And what I've done in this video is I've pulled 18 key distinctions that we're going to discuss from the perspectives of Neville Goddard and Napoleon Hill, who I believe are masters with working with the subconscious mind. And these 18 distinctions are reflections, insights, perspectives that I've gathered as a result of working with their information and as a result of working with what I had put together in my subconscious mind training program, which by the way, made a huge difference in my life because I think I might have mentioned this a few times, but in order to test the effectiveness of reprogramming my subconscious mind around that time, I decided to apply it towards attracting a ideal relationship. And by using the exact principles in that program, I found myself in my ideal relationship. In fact, my girlfriend is in front of me right now as we are recording this. She's playing a huge integral role in what I do. And together we create amazing content for sharing. And I also want to add that on the list of qualities that I look for, she meets every single one of them because I realized one very important thing. The vision is the identity. Now, I made a video on this the last video I did talking about the imagination being the identity. And you can say the imagination and the vision is the identity, both the same and also different as far as discussions go. We say imagination and vision, but the bottom line is this, who you are, who you're destined to be is your true vision. And you can create it by cleansing, disempowering thoughts and elements in your subconscious mind, which you have learned through five sensory based input and meaning associated to it, meaning that you've created that you've associated to the five sensory input data, or meaning that you have learned from others. So my goal in this video is to assist you on your journey to materialize your dreams to bring forth your vision. I made a number of videos helping you uncover your vision and I'll continue to do so. And in this video, we're talking about releasing elements in your subconscious mind, working with really deep elements in your subconscious mind to bring forth that what you truly desire, because your vision is yours and you have the power within you to bring forth your vision by working with the power of your subconscious mind. Neville Goddard says, so when you know what you want, Remain faithful to that assumption and the assumption though at the moment is denied by your senses and denied by reason. If you persist in it, it will harden into fact, which brings us to our first point. What gets hardened into fact controls automatic behaviors of the individual. If you believe that you are not worth it as far as your vision goes, if you don't believe fully within you, the vision is your birthright. It is who you are. Then you have elements that are within your subconscious mind that are being projected outwards and materialized into form through various different ways, but primarily, or it could even be secondary through your behaviors, the way you carry yourself, the way you connect with people, the way you navigate reality, the way you handle different people, environment and circumstances in your life reveals to you as to what you are assuming to be true in your subconscious mind, which a lot of times can be hardened into fact. Now, when it's hardened into fact, what you'll notice is that in the external world, you will find all kinds of evidence to support that fact. Now, if you believed in another assumption, the polar opposite of that assumption, and that was hardened into fact, then you're going to find plenty of evidence to prove to you that that assumption is true by the facts that you will find in the external world. Now, what does this mean? This means that the source is the thoughts within and the thoughts within are mostly subconscious. 
We have our conscious mind, we've got our subconscious mind. And the subconscious mind is responsible for creating our reality. And the subconscious mind has to become on board with our vision. And the way we do this is by impressing our vision through our imagination or subconscious mind reconditioning or taking in information via our five senses that are in alignment and congruent to our vision till that hardens into fact and behaviors, thoughts and actions and whatever you do projects outwards, interacts with the external world, the environment, people and circumstance to bring forth your vision. Number two, what gets hardened into fact removes from an individual's consciousness that what is not related without the use of mental or emotional force. What do I mean by this? If you believe reality to be a certain way, and if that has hardened into fact, you will find yourself surrounded by people, environment, circumstance, and information that supports it. And what will be excluded from your consciousness is that what will not be related to that vision. You won't be able to even see it. It'll be like a blind spot. Now, this can work to our advantage. I'm not talking about being indifferent. I'm talking about being in the spirit of harmony. Your true vision comes from who you really are, your soul expression. See, I believe we have our conscious, our subconscious, and the superconscious. The superconscious is the universal mind. It is the one mind, the single mind, in which we are all individual expressions from that one mind. Contained within that one mind is our true vision. And when we uncover that vision in our imagination, and we honor that vision, what gets included in our consciousness is that what is related to the vision, which includes being in the spirit of harmony with all people, environment, and circumstance. And what gets excluded from the consciousness is that what is inharmonious in thoughts, feelings, emotions, and behaviors that create inharmony in the external world, but the truth still remains, that the source is within. It is from mostly the subconscious. So as you observe what's within your consciousness, with your awareness, that what distracts you, that what your attention goes on, it reveals to you what's within yourself. And what is revealed to you can be worked on. If it's related to your vision, then you can encourage that. If it's not related to your vision, if it's an emotion that creates turmoil within, which reflects outwards and materialize into form as turmoil with people, environment, and circumstance, then you can change that within by adjusting your subconscious mind. But the bottom line is this, is that as a person continuously does the work on themselves, the environment, the people, and circumstance, the external world, becomes more harmonious. Number three, faithful assumption is what levels up a person's thought beyond limited thinking. Now, what Neville is saying is remain faithful to that assumption, even if it's denied by your five senses. Five senses. The sixth sense is your vision. It is your connection to the superconscious. It is your conversation with infinite intelligence, which we're going to talk about in a moment. The five senses are earth-based senses, and there are empowering thoughts and feelings via those senses. And there are some disempowering ones that are belonging on this earth-based experience. The disempowering ones are fear, doubt, and indecision based because for many thousands of years, we had a certain level of consciousness and it wasn't high enough to help us realize that abundance is the natural order of things when we are in harmony with the lovers within, which I call the connection between the conscious, the subconscious and the superconscious harmony within what we're talking about here in this video is becoming harmonized between the conscious, the subconscious and the superconscious. And even if you don't believe in the superconscious, even if you don't believe that it exists, then we can at least believe because it'll do wonders for you. And then in the process, you'll uncover this superconscious and you don't really have to, to be living a harmonious life is the relationship between the conscious and the subconscious, the conscious being the guardian, the director, the decision maker on where you decide to go and where your attention goes on and guarding what goes into your subconscious and the subconscious being the creative force that expresses outwards to materialize into form that what gets inputted into the subconscious 
will be impressed upon the subconscious and the subconscious will bring it forth. So by remaining faithful to that assumption, you're working with the imagination, which is the sixth sense. So you are transcending the five senses. You're saying, this is what I want impressed on the subconscious mind, that what is in my imagination. And the subconscious mind will bring it forth, whether it's from the imagination or whether it's from the five senses. Now, what is in the imagination, which comes from your vision, is a higher level thinking. A lot of times you'll find that it transcends the thinking beyond what you have learned from the five senses. And as a result of honoring that imagination, that vision, that assumption of the wish fulfilled in the imagination, your thinking will start to ele elevate. What you'll notice is that you will think different thoughts that are more empowered or more empowering to yourself, your self-esteem, your self-confidence will go up towards others, people, environment, and circumstance. And these thoughts that you have will become a assumption that will harden into fact because you will honor the thoughts. The thoughts will be projected outwards and materialize into form and you will see it and you will assume it to be fact at a subconscious level. And you will see it with the repetition rematerializing over and over again into form. He says, so if I assume that I am, I don't have to, I don't need any evidence to support it. I assume that I am. And what? Well, I name it and having given it a name, giving it form, given it definition, remaining in it, I resurrect it. And if it takes a thousand men to aid the birth of the state, a thousand men will play their parts and I don't have to go out and look for them. What is he talking about? See, there is one imagination, really one mind, and we are individual expressions of that mind. The superconscious mind is the universal mind. And you as an individual is made up of a conscious and a subconscious mind. When you're dealing with something like faith and honoring that imagination, living in the imagination, you are working by sending a faith based message over to the superconscious mind. And the superconscious mind, the universal mind is connected to the subconscious mind of you and everybody else. And that information goes over to them in via the subconscious mind, and they will have hunches and inspirations to be in connection with you. Now, this is something that I experience on a regular basis. A lot of times I get emails from individuals that say, I felt I had to reach out to you and you have the answer to this question that I'm looking for. And they ask me the question and it happened to be the very thing that I figured out last week. And we are all connected via this invisible link. The question is, do we believe it's possible? Do we honor the connection? How do you establish the connection? You establish the connection through higher vibration thoughts, leveling up your thoughts, thoughts that are in the spirit of harmony. What is the spirit of harmony? Well, look, you look at the spirit of harmony from multiple perspectives, a good relationship between the conscious, the subconscious and the superconscious, number one, which I call the lovers within. And number two, a relationship and realization that your vision doesn't take away your true vision doesn't take away from the world, from divine, from evolution, it contributes to it. Win for you win for those that you deal with and win for divine or evolution. That's the true vision. Now, this might not have been happening for thousands of years, but our consciousness is going up and this is going to continue to increase. And we will see more and more living in the spirit of harmony. Look around and you'll see that there's far more people living in the spirit of harmony when they embrace this philosophy. A lot of my students, including myself, have realized that by releasing that does not that what does not serve me that was within my subconscious mind, which I've taken in via five senses and given meaning to that was disempowering by releasing that programming. I allow myself to go into the superconscious and get my vision and express accordingly. Why? Because fears start to go away. Fears break the connection between the conscious, the subconscious and the superconscious. So number four, we are individuals made up of conscious and subconscious mind connected to the superconscious mind, otherwise known as the universal mind. 
And when you work in harmony in the imagination by encouraging positive, uplifting, nurturing spirit of harmony thoughts, that information will go and up to the superconscious and the superconscious will work with it. That's how you work with the universal mind. That's how you communicate with the universal mind. The universal mind will not bring scarcity based thinking into the subconscious mind of others that it will not be allowed to go forth. That kind of information is from the five sensory based input here on earth. It does not exist in that level of vibration, that level of consciousness that is the superconscious, which is the creative source of everything. Spirit of harmony brings forth number five, those that are in the spirit of harmony. Now, the beautiful thing is that when you work with this, when you cleanse your subconscious, you'll start to think more spirit of harmony based thoughts. And you will notice that you'll attract the people that are also in spirit of harmony and it'll keep increasing. It's almost like when they show up into your life, you could say, I was expecting you. And they will say to you, well, I was expecting to deal with you. And here's what I would like to do. And you would say to them, here is what I like to do. And you will find it to be in harmony in harmony, in the spirit of harmony. It is what is known as a true mastermind, true mastermind. See, in my opinion, and working with this through realization of experiencing this, a mastermind is when two minds come together, two or more come together, and they create something that is greater than than they could have done by themselves. So they're working on a creative solution to a problem. And as a result of the two minds working in sync, they come up with an idea, a concept, a way of solving the problem, a way of going about doing things that is greater than they are actually combining together to be in the spirit of harmony. And as a result of that, infinite intelligence shows up and creates the third mind. So when you cleanse your subconscious mind, you'll notice that you'll be in more of a greater degree of spirit of harmony within yourself, between the conscious, the subconscious and the superconscious, and you will attract those that are also like that because you don't attract what you want. You attract who you are. And part of this journey of cleansing the subconscious mind is becoming who we are, being one with the vision, the vision being the true identity. Number six, your brain knows your imagination as reality. See, this is very interesting. If you consistency and persistency from that place, Imagine, believe, have faith in that what you hold in your imagination. Your body will start to act different. Your thoughts will be different. Your posture will be different. The way you communicate will be different. I know because I've been working with this. A lot of people ask me, how did I improve my communication skills? How can I get on a microphone and just keep expressing like this? So precisely, well, it's because harmoniously within, I've developed a really good relationship between my conscious mind, my subconscious mind and my superconscious mind. I am not overly in my head yet. I'm consciously aware. My subconscious mind is a repository of a lot of experience that I've gathered in my life in business entrepreneurship on these topics, which expresses through me. And as that connection and facilitation happens, the superconscious gets involved and projects outwards. Now what happens? is my brain is working. There's no doubt about it. It is involved in the equation. And all of these behaviors, this way that I'm communicating and everything that I am is a net result of what I imagine myself to be. And for many years, I would imagine myself being this way. And that applies for everything else. And as a result of that, my behaviors, my actions, my words, how I communicate expresses accordingly. The training happens in the mind and the visualization. Now, this is not to say that you can't do the hands on training, like practice public speaking, but you can absolutely work in your imagination to become a better communicator. Your imagination can be made so vivid that you can't tell the difference between a real act and an imaginary act. And if you've done it right, you'll notice your behaviors have changed. He says, so if you precede your visit, by an imaginal act, they will see you as you see yourself. If you walk in knowing that you are no good, they will see you exactly that way. But if you walk in the assumption that things are as you desire them to be, 
They are going to see you that way, and this is life. So while in the presence of another, practice putting no label on them to allow infinite intelligence to express out from you and materialize them into form in the spirit of harmony. See, what happens is we have our imaginal act. We believe ourselves to be a certain way. And that's either a conscious imaginal act or it's a subconscious from past programming. But regardless, we have that in our imagination. And what is in our imagination impresses on the subconscious mind and projects outwards to materialize into form of how we interpret people, environment, and circumstance. See, all people are the same. We just believe them to be different. Now, that might sound like a bold statement, but practice it. Imagine in your mind how you want to be received. Imagine in your mind how you want to receive others. And when you show up in the presence of others, release the conscious judging. Release the categorizing. Allow the subconscious to express that what was impressed on the subconscious and allow superconscious to also do its thing. And you won't start to notice that they will be that. If you imagine them to be a certain way, a positive way, and you show up and they're not that way, there is programming that's in the subconscious mind that's still projecting outwards to materialize them into form. Why? Because all is actually one mind. If you believe them to be their greatest self, that what is actually their true vision, then that message will go into the superconscious and the superconscious will communicate to their subconscious and they will start behaving that way around you. Their behaviors will be different around you. What you might even notice is they behave totally different to you versus others. They'll be more harmonious around you. They'll be more pleasant around you. This will, they'll be more gracious around you. Now I'll speak from experience on this because everybody that I'm around with now presents themselves in this higher level of version of themselves. Whereas in a past time in my life, I would walk around with scarcity thinking and negative programming in my subconscious mind, and the world would seem really dark. It would seem really harsh, and people would respond to me in kind of this dark energy. And I, I would think it was them failing to realize that I was rematerializing them or projecting outwards them into form and attracting those that want to play that theater with me. But after I realized that I'm the cause, and I started working on this by working with my subconscious mind, by doing my imaginal acts, by cleansing my subconscious mind using subconscious audios and other modalities, what I then realized is that by assuming them to be a certain way, they show up that way even if it's just for that moment. They are that way. And I've watched people transform in front of me. People who I haven't seen in years who were a certain way, but now they're this different way. Number eight, mood materializes into people, environment, and circumstance to reveal our mood within. How we believe reality to be will be reflected in the external world to be so. That's one of the deep secrets of the subconscious mind. A deep understanding and grasp of this gives you an enormous amount of power. Now we're taking this down into a nuanced level of emotion, mood, how you feel. They will feel. If you're angry, they will be angry in front of you. I know it seems kind of far out, like how could it be that way, but just try. And remember, actually, remember a time in your life when you had an amazing, uplifting, powerful, source-based mood of abundance and you were doing your thing, whatever it is, you were out and about. Notice how harmonious the world was to that mood. And I gave you my own personal example, a time in my life where I felt a lot of darkness within, negativity within. I experienced it without in the external world. Now, I've seen this happen many times in my life. A really high peak positive state reflected outwards by surrounded as far as the senses can see by people, environment, and circumstances that are harmonious to that. And I've seen it in darker times in my life, again, surrounded by people, environment, and circumstance to reflect it accordingly. I was the source within. I am the source within. My mood materializes into people, environment, and circumstance to reveal what is going on within me. In a way, they're helping me. They're helping you, telling you what's inside of you. 
When you adjust that within yourself via the subconscious, it starts to change because see, we're not trying to consciously will and force this. The subconscious mind projects outwards and creates into form. That's it. And it's, it does so automatically. We don't even have to think about it consciously. It's always happening all the time. And it can be programmed in our imagination. And I like a dual process, working with the imagine, imagination, the imaginary act, and journaling, taking notes of what is revealed to me in the external world as I go about reality, doing whatever I do every day. For me, it's the world of entrepreneurship. It's one of the best worlds to reveal about myself because it's a world filled with higher level of challenges that I choose to rise up to, to reveal more about myself. And as I rise up to those challenges, I create more success, more returns. And this has been the process I've been following for years and I will continue to do so. And each time I notice something that is inharmonious revealed to me in the external world, I will write that down. I will take a note of it and I will address it by in my imagination or my subconscious mind audios, affirmations. Now, unlocking the power of affirmations is very important. I got a specific process and I created a video about that and I'll put a link in the description. Thoughts become things and affirmations in the external world, which may be assumed as fact. The origin is still thought and thus the assumed fact, no matter how valid it may appear, can and will be changed by thought. Now, by the way, these quotes that I'm reading here, or the actual 18 elements are pulled from my Instagram. And every day I post to my Instagram, so I recommend you go over there and follow me and consume this information because these are thoughts that I have as a result of working with my own subconscious mind and working with my clients and helping them in areas of their life, whether it be entrepreneurship and business and personal development, working with a lot of the identity elements in the subconscious mind. So I took them and infused them in here. They were my inspiration. So thoughts become things and affirmations in the external world, which may be assumed as fact. What is being revealed to you in the external world, because it's there, because you can pick it up within your five senses, you can taste it, you can smell it, you can feel it, you can see it, you can hear it. It's easily assumed as fact because you see it, you experience it via the five senses. And what is experienced via the five senses can be assumed as fact, but that's a choice. When you realize that that was a projection from the subconscious materialized in the external world, then you begin to question that and say, wait a second, I can now choose to assume that to be fact. If I change the cause within what happens, here's a circumstance, here's a person, here's an environment, here's how I feel about it. Here's the, the chain of events leading up to it. Here's what happened. What if I change the cause within about this? What if I change the way I look at it? What happens? Well, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Try it. Take a current circumstance. Take a current problem that you have and shift your perspective around. See, one of the things that I've learned on this journey of entrepreneurship is I have learned to be able to see opportunity where others can only see problems and roadblocks and impossibilities. I've trained myself to do it. Now, I've been on this journey for 10 years, 10 years as a full-time entrepreneur. Through repetition of being exposed through so many problems in my businesses, in my clients' businesses, and working as a consultant and coach, in working with many entrepreneurial organizations and companies of all different levels, I've been exposed to so many problems and issues and solutions to that, that my subconscious has found so many ways to solve problems to the point of repetition where someone who's starting this journey brings to me their scope of problems and I can easily see solutions, easily see the solutions. What does that mean? It means the solutions exist. Now these are valid, viable solutions. These are concrete solutions. These aren't things that I'm just making up. But the difference between that entrepreneur and me is a perspective. They don't see it as an opportunity. They see it as a problem. They see it as an impossibility. The moment you see it as an impossibility, it becomes so. What you believe, as far as reality goes, will be projected outside of you and materialized into form. So one of the things we have to always remember is that the word impossible can limit us. So Napoleon Hill had once said in Think and Grow Rich, one of my favorite quotes, he said, a great many years ago, I purchased a fine dictionary. The first thing I did 
with it was to turn to the word impossible and neatly clip it out of the book. It would not be an unwise thing for you to do. Now, why would he suggest something like this? Because the moment we have this impossibility idea show up, it is reflected in the external world on the, based on what we're thinking about, dealing with a person, an environment, or circumstance. It will be reflected in the external world as fact of impossibility. But in order to, and think about your, like, don't just take my word for it. You have experienced this. This is a beautiful thing. I'm not talking about things that you don't know about. You have already experienced these things I'm talking about. Reflect upon a time in your life where others saw a situation as an impossibility and you saw it as a possibility and you were the one who figured it out. You learned how to create that where others could not see it. It was because you first believed in your mind that it was possible. And that projected out and reflected and materialized as the possibility. The door showed up and you held the key with the thought. The thought is the key that opens up the door. So Napoleon Hill talks about the concept of the sixth sense. And I refer to this as the superconscious, the infinite intelligence conversation, the universal mind. Now, some might agree with this and some might not agree with it. I have a lot of reference experiences personally that I work with, and I've talked to many others who work with this, and I agree with what he says here. He says the sixth sense is the portion of the subconscious mind, which has been referred to as the creative imagination. It has also been referred to as the receiving set through which ideas, plans, and thoughts flash into the mind. The flashes are sometimes called hunches or inspirations. The sixth sense defies description. It cannot be described to a person who has not mastered the other principles in the philosophy because such a person has no knowledge and no experience with which sixth sense may be compared. Understanding of the sixth sense comes only by meditating through mind development from within. Now, this is why I've been putting out a lot of videos about developing your mind. In the Kabbalion, we say all is mine. The all is mine. And the universe is mental. You have the solution to everything via your mind within the subconscious, within the superconscious, within infinite intelligence, via the sixth sense, via the connection to the subconscious mind of other individuals, via the mastermind. Again, the mastermind, individuals coming together in the spirit of harmony. I'm not talking about groupthink, where people come together and try to be right, rather than focus on what is right. Okay? Rather than focusing on what is right, they focus on who is right. That would be groupthink. That would be egoic. We're looking to believe in the possibility of the solution and saying as a collective coming together in a mastermind, we will figure it out together. That thought goes into the minds of all individuals, impresses itself in the subconscious mind, goes to the superconscious mind and is brought forth as the idea, the hunch, the inspiration to solve the problem or create the solution, whatever it is. Now he says the sixth sense defies description. It cannot be described to a person who has not mastered the other principles of the philosophy. And I'll sp speak from experiences because I've been reading Thinking Grow Rich since 2004, and I've used it many times to create multiple definite chief aims, and I've achieved every single one of them. And I have one right now, and I will achieve it. And each time I achieve my definite chief aim, I realize the power of the sixth sense. How so? I'll tell you exactly how. Because during the time of in between of generating the definite chief aim and the manifestation of the definite chief aim, I had no idea how it was going to be brought forth, but I will tell you this. Ideas, hunches, and inspiration showed up that redefine all the things that I've ever learned, logic and reason even. And I followed those hunches and inspirations. And some way, somehow, it brought forth. And Steve Jobs said it. He says, you cannot connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards. He even talks about trusting your intuition. That's why he really recommends the book by Yogananda, and so do, I do, so do I, The Autobiography of the Yogi. You read a book like that, and you will automatically realize the power that you have within you. And it is through the repetition of achieving your definite chief aims that you build a deeper connection with the sixth sense. Perhaps that's why a few people, when you look at the grand scheme of things, have a deep connection with the sixth sense. Maybe they have not honored the voice within and created a result of the definite chief aim, which is a fragment of their true identity. See, I believe that the definite chief aim is part of a grand vision. I believe that the definite chief aim is part of your true vision. 
If by nurturing the definite chief aim that you have right now and bringing it forth, you have a greater sense of understanding and awareness of your overall mission and purpose in life. One of the things that I found to be true is that by following the definite chief aim, I realized that all is in harmony to contribute to the definite chief aim. And that each element of the definite chief aim or each definite chief aim, when completed, builds my connection with the sixth sense and then reveals to me my next definite chief aim. And each definite chief aim, it's like a little uh, pixelated vision. Okay, each pixel shows up what the definite chief aim accomplished to reveal to me what my purpose is here on this planet. And that's why I made that video, the last video I made when I said, your imagination is your vision. It is your identity. Because I've, I've realized this is that every time I hit a definite chief aim, more and more of my mission, my, my life purpose is revealed to itself, revealed to me. Now I believe life has an interesting pattern. When you accomplish something, infinite intelligence, sixth sense shows up with a greater responsibility for you. And this responsibility is to bring it forth heaven on earth. Divine is always looking to manifest on earth. That's why it said as above, so below. And it is through this process that it's manifested. You, you are the one that brings it forth. It is through you and I and everyone here that the vision of where we are going, divine evolution is being brought forth. If you look back, humans have evolved. And it is a net result of paying attention and honoring the vision each individual that has contributed had a definite chief aim. And by constantly identifying and honoring and seeing the definite chief aim all the way till completion, you uncover more of your vision and you start to understand the sixth sense even more. So number 10, all is part of the superconscious mind. Impressing the superconscious, superconscious mind is done through the imagination. So when you get your vision from the superconscious mind, your definite chief aim, you are to follow it all the way till completion. And you can work with bringing forth your definite chief aim via your imagination. It is via your imagination that the conscious, the subconscious and the superconscious work in harmony, the lovers within the subconscious mind is impressed and brought forth. The conscious mind continues to facilitate and guard and nurture the subconscious mind and the ways that define or defy possibility are figured out by the superconscious. Number 11, optimal behaviors manifest automatically because we continuously support and encourage our imagination. We also realize that our five senses are there to support our sixth sense, the imagination. So for many years, we could have been living in a world where we were run by our five senses. And you could live that way if you want. But when you work with this philosophy, when you work through this process of identifying your vision and making this a continuum, it's a continuous journey. You realize that the five senses are here to support the vision of the sixth sense. Information pours through you like a conduit via the sixth sense through your imagination into the subconscious mind, impresses the subconscious mind. The subconscious mind projects outwards and materializes into form. That information is picked up via the five senses and interpreted by the conscious mind and given meaning to to tune the, like an instrument, the subconscious mind to be in alignment with the vision and then send specific instructions back to the superconscious to repeat the process again and again, over and over again. That's the relationship of the lovers within. But the primary living is through the imagination, the sixth sense. Now that is a person that is projecting outwards, releasing. That is a person that is said to have bring, who brings the goods to the table, arrives with the full cup. They're not looking to take because all is within. They are looking to express and share and contribute. And that's how a mastermind is created. And that's how you have abundance consciousness. And you can feel when you're around a person like that. And my goal in this video is to help you unlock that because we all have that potentiality within us. And it continuously gets released more and more by doing the work, by cleansing the subconscious mind from that, what breaks the connection between the conscious and the subconscious and the superconscious. 
And when the superconscious is expressed through the, su through the subconscious in the external world, that's where you get beautiful works of art. That's where you get beautiful information, insights. That's where you get breakthroughs in technology, breakthrough, breakthroughs in medical science, breakthroughs in everything, because you're working with the spirit of harmony, because you're working with imagination, because you're releasing fears, doubts, and indecision on that what is your purpose and your vision. See, Napoleon Hill said this, and I'm a huge fan of this, in that chapter of Outwitting the Six Ghosts of Fear. He said this, and I'll pull it up here. He said, indecision is the seedling of fear. Remember this as you read. Indecision crystallizes into doubt, and the two blend and become fear. See, in the last video when I talked about mental chemistry, I recommend you watch that video and watch it again and again and again because what I was really getting at over there is you don't want to wait till you fear. You want to catch it at an indecision and doubt level before it crystallizes into fear. You have the awareness and the power to capture it at that point. Because as soon as fear hits you, that's when you risk drifting. That's when you break the connection between the lovers within. That's when you get in your head about it. That's when you're going to act from a scarcity perspective. That is when you're not working in harmony to release that within your subconscious mind to help you solve the problem. So catch it at an indecision and doubt level. The moment you feel indecision, you trust that the answers are within you. You release it and you ask the subconscious mind. You say, subconscious mind, you are the source of creation of all that exists because you are connected with the superconscious mind. You are also a repository of the experiences I have had in my life. And I realize consciously that you have far more experiences than I could consciously think of at this moment. You have the answers within you. Present to me the hunch, the inspiration, and I will act upon it with calm faith. And it will be revealed to you. To the extent that you have the connection and the relationship between the conscious and subconscious, superconscious, it will be revealed to you right then and there. And the key is take action on it. Speed of implementation. If you get that hunch, you have to act upon it right away. Because if you don't act upon it right away, more doubt will set in. More indecision will set in. When you act upon it, you move everything forward. And it might not necessarily directly produce the result, but in some way, somehow, it will be brought forth because you're moving forward. The next idea will show up, the next thing. And when you connect the dots looking backwards, then it will make sense to you. There are infinite ways, number 12, infinite ways of bringing forth your vision found by listening to your own inner voice. The inner voice speaks from the superconscious mind which is the source of all that exists and your subconscious. And even if you don't believe in the superconscious, it will still speak from the subconscious because the subconscious is a storehouse of so many reference experiences that you have had in your life. And there's tons of them. You have to believe and have faith and confidence in yourself. That's why I recommend watching the video I did on self-confidence formula by Napoleon Hill. When a person has self-confidence and faith in themselves, they tap into their subconscious and their subconscious expresses. You'll notice that people who have a high degree of real core confidence are more likely in flow more often. They are not in their head. They're not stuck and inharmonious in the relationship between the conscious and the subconscious. You have to trust that it exists within you and you have an inner voice and it can speak to you. For me, I built a connection with my inner voice to the point where my inner voice speaks to me conversations. But for you, it might be a hunch, an inspiration. But the more you honor it, the clearer that inner voice becomes, the more pronounced it becomes. And again, that's why Steve Jobs said, don't let the noise of other people's opinions drown out your own inner voice, because all is one mind. The inner voice is connected to the inner voice of everybody else. The sixth sense probably is the medium of contact between the finite man a finite mind of man and the infinite intel and infinite intelligence. And for this reason, it is a mixture of both the mental and the spiritual. It is believed to be the point in which the mind of man connects to the universal mind. All well-being is materialized. 
through alignment with consciousness rising and experience through our five senses guided by our six. Now this will make sense to you when you have raised your consciousness and I recommend studying the work of David Hawkins, letting go and power versus force and the levels of consciousness. When you work on releasing the lower consciousness level based thinking of fear, anger, resentment, hatred, envy, you move into a place of bliss, joy, unconditional love, acceptance, real reason, real understanding. You seek to understand. And then what happens is that those experiences, those thoughts project outwards via your subconscious mind and materialize into form. And as we said, guided by the sixth sense, the voice within lifting up your thoughts to a higher degree, no matter what you find, as far as a statement, it can always be ele elevated to a higher level. Number 14, the most Powerful television. This is, this is a great quote that I put together in my Instagram that came to me as a result of a conversation I had with my superconscious. The most powerful television is our own imagination in which you create worlds where you are the hero and all supporting you to bring forth your well-being into this planet with such vivid detail that it rewires your neurology and your brain to automatically generate actions to bring it forth. You do not need anyone else to tell you what your vision has to be. A lot of us are programmed by the information that we're consuming. And the question we have to ask consciously, and this is where the conscious mind has to step in and say, is this information programming our subconscious mind for abundance, for well-being, for joy, for peace, or is it not? And we have a choice right then and there. And we always have to remember this, the imagination in our mind can be the greatest source of entertainment, joy, happiness, bliss, inspiration in your own mind, and you control it. And you have access to it, and you can cultivate it, and you can build a relationship with it. And just like how you consume information, that information goes into your subconscious mind and projects outwards to materialize into form, so will what will be in your imagination. It will do the same thing. The question is, do you want to have control of that what programs your subconscious mind? So Napoleon Hill says, before you can put any portion of this philosophy into successful use, you must be prepared to receive it. The preparation is not difficult. It begins with study, analysis, and understanding of the three enemies which you shall have to clear out. These are indecision, doubt, and fear. The sixth sense will never function while these three negatives or any of them remain in your mind. The members of this unholy trio are closely related. Where one is found, the other two are close at hand. So this is one of the biggest insights that I'm going to share with you, what I found with working with the subconscious mind. You can categorize all subconscious mind reprogramming to the removal of indecision, doubt, and fear, which are five sense-based input, data, and meaning. Okay? Not the data, but the meaning. So it's, you've heard this say, said before. It's not what happens to you. It's how you respond to it. It's not what happens to you. It's the meaning you give to it. And that's why I recommend man's search for meaning and watch the video I did last on mental chemistry, which is exactly about this transmutation. Now, when fear, doubt, and indecision sets in your subconscious mind, they will begin to project outwards to materialize into form to reflect fear, doubt, and indecision and fear when it's projected outwards in the external world cripples us because it shows up. And it's scary because it's revealing what's within, which is scary. And it can cause us to remain there. Now, there's always a way out. We'll always find a way out. But the key is this. If you want to continue to unravel that what is within your vision, is you do the work to remove it at an early stage, fears, which is a net result of indecision and doubt. Number 15. The discipline of taking rapid action on an idea that you're curious about will not only give you empirical data, but train your ability to trust yourself and act in spite of doubt, fear, and hesitation while cultivating wisdom and decisiveness. Okay, discipline of taking rapid action will cut through the indecision and doubt right then and there. It's a habit. See, overthinking is going to lead to fear. That's it. When you start overthinking, you have initially embraced a slight seedling of indecision and doubt. 
That's why right then and there, we can ask the subconscious on what we need to do and take the action right then and there. And if you look at anybody that has created success, one of my favorite programs that I ever was part of was called Get Altitude by Evan Pagan. And he said in the beginning, he said, one of the commonalities that he has found, and he's a very extensive researcher, and he, a lot of his uh, information I hold true as foundations, fundamentals for building success, especially in entrepreneurship. He said, the one commonality, the one thing that successful entrepreneurs have in common is speed of implementation. And I did that discussion on opportunity by Ibn Pagan. I recommend you watch it. He said, get version one out in the marketplace as fast as possible and get, get, then get it up to version three as fast as possible. Out into the marketplace, take the action. Now, this is a practice. It's a way of living. When you get an idea to act upon it right away, you are cultivating decisiveness and you're getting data. You cannot get data from the external world. Everything is optimization. You cannot get data from the external world unless there's some action taken in the external world. Otherwise you get stuck in your head in theory. The beautiful thing is the more you do this with repetition, the more you honor your inner voice because you'll start to see that some way, somehow it works out. Number 16, the sixth sense is a conversation with infinite intelligence that shows up when you are in a vibrational match in your imagination, which is clear of thoughts containing fears, doubts, and indecision. So by taking rapid action, by honoring your inner voice, by trusting it and not being afraid of the six basic fears as a result of taking. So what happens? Fear of poverty, fear of criticism, fear of ill health, fear of loss of love of someone, fear of old age, fear of death, hold somebody back from taking action. That's because in the earlier stages, they encourage indecision and doubt based thoughts that, that became fear in those areas. They encouraged them to the point it became fear. And you don't want it to get to that point. And if you want to build a connection to the superconscious mind, you have to do this work. You have to release those fears. You have to release the early stages of it and take action because you have to get into the vibrational match of the sixth sense, which is a really high vibration, which is a confidence based vibration. A person that believes in themselves has confidence, creates success. Look at anybody that has produced any results that you admire. It doesn't necessarily have to be money or finance, whatever. You will find within them a high degree of confidence. And whether they can articulate what, I, what it is I'm talking about right here. And a lot of them I've talked to have never articulated this before. And I've shared this information with, with them. And they say this, they say, wow, you are able to articulate what I have been feeling. And so they might not necessarily be able to explain what we're talking about here, but they are experiencing this in some shape or form. But the key is this, they get access to their subconscious and superconscious by releasing the fears, doubts, and indecision. So thus, that's why I put huge emphasis when it comes to programming the subconscious mind. One of the big elements that we want to keep into consideration is noting where the fears, doubts, and indecision show up and work on releasing them. Number 17, flow brings forth results in harmony with our vision because the feeling experienced while in flow is the mental alchemy that is projected outwards to materialize as form. It is then experienced back through our five senses as validation of the feeling of flow within. Flow is where we want to be at. Flow is where challenge meets skill. It is where you're being and living a pur purposeful life. It is when you're progressively moving forward towards the realization of your definite chief aim. It is when you're living your vision, creating your vision, and it, it will be brought forth. And then you move on to the next one and the next one. So watch the video I did on mental chemistry. Watch the discussion I did on flow by Mihai Csikszentmihalyi. Flow is a very important element to keep in consideration. When a person is in flow, they're also very lighthearted. When a person is not in flow, they're stuck in their head, they're angry. That's because they have given into fear. Fear brings forth those lower levels of the emotional scale. The level that you want to get at is the higher levels of the emotional scale. Okay, watch the emotional scale discussions that are probably on YouTube on uh, Esther and Jerry Hicks. Maybe I'll do a discussion on that. The emotional guidance scale. They even talk about it. They said being in those higher vibrations, the higher levels of the emotional scale will allow you to connect to infinite intelligence. 
to your voice within the superconscious. And that is experienced when you're in flow. When you experience challenges while you're in flow, you're able to overcome it because the idea has come from within. We have the subconscious. There's a harmonious relationship between the conscious and the subconscious. And I'll even add to it and say the superconscious as well. And number 13, always remember this. You are the conduit that streams infinite intelligence. We all have access to infinite intelligence. It is accessible to all of us. And the link is within. It is within you. Just like any conduit, energy flows from side, from one side to another within its casing. Fully pr protected from external contaminants to smoothly carry out its meaningful journey in all its purity, all the way to its destination. You are being guided. You are protected. You are being supported on your vision. And you have a choice to honor that by taking inventory of what is within your subconscious mind that denies it and releasing that. And as you release it, you'll find yourself more in flow. Flow is the energy that goes through the conduit. It is where you are on purpose. Now, this doesn't mean you have to be on flow all the time. But it does mean this, that the more you embrace flow, the more you honor your flow, the more you honor these things that we're talking about, the more you'll find that you're living purposefully the more you'll find you'll be able to come up with sol and solve problems in creative ways never even thought of before because you have a, a very harmonious relationship between the conscious, the subconscious, and the superconscious. And the energy flows through you protected. You will be guided. Your sixth sense will warn you. You will have a heightened degree of sensitivity for vibes and energy. You will learn to trust and honor that what you feel. And I'll speak from experience. I've had this many times. I've had certain little feelings show up about not going into certain places, only to then experience the negativity of that place. But now I honor them. And when I follow the feelings that guide me, I end up in harmonious situations. If you want to copy this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.